This is Geometry Lesson 7-3 using Triangle Congruence Theorems. In this chapter we're going to begin our study of proofs, or, or I shouldn't say begin our study of proofs, but continue our study of proofs, but we're going to begin using our Triangle Congruence Theorems in this lesson. So the first activity is just going to help us set up a proof. We're going to talk about it first and then we'll do the formal proof below it. So the first thing we're asked to do in this activity is to copy the figure and mark the given information onto the drawing. So we're given that AB is parallel to XY. We're also told that AX bisects BY. So if AX bisects BY, that means that this side and this side would be equal because this would be our midpoint if that went through there. So we also have parallel lines, so we could say that some angles would be congruent to each other. We could say this angle here would be congruent using alternate interior, and we can also say this one is another set. And then I'm looking at my figure, and I see my two sides, two sides, in, or two lines intersecting, which give us a set of vertical angles. So now I have another set of angles that would be equal to each other. So let's, now that we marked everything up on our drawing, let's take a look and see at this proof and see what um, that means for us. So the first part, AB is parallel to BY, or I'm sorry, AB is parallel to XY, was given to us. And then we already marked on our picture that angle B was congruent to angle Y. Make sure you get your angle symbol in there. By the alternate interior angles theorem we stated that AX bisected BY so that would give me the mid, P is the midpoint by definition of a bisector of a segment so that means that BP was congruent to PY we stated that we had some vertical angles so angle APB was congruent to angle XPY so now we can say that our triangles are congruent using ASA congruence theorem and we see that in step 2, step 5, and step 6 we have an angle, our side, and our angle so ASA congruence theorem would be the theorem that we would use to finalize our proof that triangle ABP is congruent to triangle XYP Let's take a look at our next proof here. We're given the triangle EBA, EBA is congruent to angle DBC, so angle EBA is congruent to DBC. You can see the markings there. We can say, or it's given to us that angle A is congruent to angle C. See the markings there also. And C, and the midpoint of AC, is point B. So all that information is given to us. So let's start our proof with our given information. Now you can see in the drawing that there are some hash marks here, slash marks, that state that AB is equal to BC. And that came from the midpoint, or the, I'm sorry, the definition of a midpoint. So in our proof now we can say that AB is congruent to BC by the definition of a midpoint. So now if we look at our two triangles we have three sets of information that could lead me to think that my triangles are congruent. Let's just see if we have a theorem that supports the information that we were given. We have two angles and the side that's included in those two angles so that would be a situation where triangle AEB would be congruent. Oops, let's not call it AEB we would like to call it triangle ABE is congruent to triangle CBD. Even though I started out naming it differently, would have referred to the same triangle, but we like to use the same name as in the proof statement. And so we can call this um, congruent because of the angle side angle congruence theorem. Let's take a look at our next theorem, or our next proof, angle. Um, we're given that angle B and angle D are right angles and we're given that C is the midpoint of BD and we're given that angle A is congruent to angle E. So our drawings all marked up for us. The first part was given. Um, the next part was angle, the measure of angle B equals 9D 
and the measure of angle D is also 90. And we can say that because of the definition of a right angle. So therefore we can say that um, angle B is equal to the measure of angle D because of the transitive property. If 90 is equal to both B and D, then B and D would be equal to each other. So we can say that angle B is congruent to angle D because of the definition of congruence. One might argue that that's the angle congruence theorem as well. I think you could go both ways on that one. Then BC is congruent to DC due to the definition of a midpoint. So our last statement, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC because of the angle angle side congruence theorem. So let's see what sets of angles and sides we have in our proof to make sure we have it stated here. In step three, we have an angle. In step one, we have an angle right here. And then in step five, we have a set of sides. So there's our ASA, or I'm sorry, AAS congruence theorem can be supported within our proof. We can find all three of those parts in our proof. All right, in this example, we are given that KI is congruent to, to TI and that angle or I'm sorry, ray IE bisects angle KIT. So if you were doing this on your own, you would want to make sure that you marked your figure appropriately. We also want to look for some information that we can get from the figure on our inner drawing. And we see that a, set of, a side is shared between the two triangles, so we can use the reflexive property to state that, those si that that side is congruent in both triangles. So that's why they started out. The first step is EI is congruent to EI. That's a reflexive property. Then they use the IE bisects angle KIT. So if that's a bisector, of this angle, this large angle here, then we can say each the pieces are equal. So angle KIE is congruent to TIE because of the definition of an angle bisector. Make sure you get that angle symbol in there to decide what kind to state what kind of a bisector. We can go back and state the other part of the given KI is congruent to TI. So now we can use the side angle side congruence theorem. And you'll notice that you can find that in step one, step three, and step four. Here are my two sides, and here's my angle. So then, if these two triangles are congruent to each other, I can now say that my parts are congruent using the CPCF congruence theorem. Now you'll notice that you have two more proofs at the bottom or at, on the next page, those, will, those proofs will work through in class. This concludes Lesson 7-3.